Hey friends, what's up? Ash here with GenSense. Hope that you guys are doing well. Hope you're doing better than me because I am battling a head cold, but I think I'll pull through. I hope. So today what we're going to be doing is talking about the best designer fragrance releases of this year so far, according to you guys. So a little while back on the community tab of my YouTube channel, I asked you guys, what do you think is the best designer fragrance release that's come out so far this year? You guys voted, you guys answered, and we're gonna go over today the seven fragrances that you all think are the best. So this one will be in order. Number one is the fragrance that got the most votes, number two got the second most, and so on and so forth. Without further ado though, let's jump into it. Let's check out what you guys think are the seven best designers of the year so far. So we just crossed into July, at least as when I'm filming this video, just past the halfway point, just halfway home. Spoken about this before a little bit, but new releases have slowed to a trickle. At the beginning of the year, we were getting tons of releases, all kinds of new things popping out. Here lately, not quite so much. So we'll see how it goes toward the end of the year. Before we jump into number seven, I wanna throw you a code for jomashop.com. That code is of course, gents8. Use that to save yourself $8 off any order over $110. Joma Shop is a fragrance discounter among many other things that they discount on their website, clothing, sunglasses, etc. But they have thousands of fragrances on there. They're adding more every day. So check them out, jomashop.com. All right, number seven, this one had a little bit of confusion. Some people were saying, I don't know if this is officially a 2022 release or a 2021 release, but I want to vote for it anyway. And it is the new Dior Homme Sport. This one got a good amount of love, a decent amount of people saying that it was actually their favorite sport flanker period on the market. It's a bit similar to Dior Homme 2020, so it has that, that sort of modern woody base to the scent profile here. Also a little fresher, as you would expect, than Dior Homme 2020. And it has a little bit of a green edge, which I really appreciate. Dior Homme Sport 2021 slash 2022, I think is a really good release. So I agree with you guys here. I really like this one a lot. And it's interesting to see how that new Dior Homme sort of DNA scent profile is coming around for a lot of people. With Dior Homme 2020, there was a lot of backlash, including from myself. A lot of people saying, I don't like what you're doing with the Dior Homme line. I don't like you getting rid of the iris. I don't like this. I don't like that. But now with Dior Homme Sport, it's kind of continuing on with that, that path that they set with Dior Homme 2020, but there's not really the backlash this time. Then after that, the new Terre d'Hermes Eau Givre, number six. And this is another fragrance that I like a lot. The note breakdown, they kept really simple with this one, which I always complain about like a big baby. It has citron in the opening and it's done really well. It's a little bit more natural smelling than you'll find in a lot of citrus openings in different designer fragrances, but it doesn't go too far down that path of sourness, tartness, rindiness that will turn some people away. So it sort of straddles the line there and gets it just about perfect. It's very fresh and easy to wear. It's uplifting, but at the same time, a little bit classy, like you would expect from a Terre d'Hermes flanker. Nice woodiness in that scent as it dries down as well. Really well done. Terre d'Hermes Ogive Day number six. Number five is from Giorgio Armani. It's Aqua de Joe. Eau de Parfum. Aqua de Joe Eau de Parfum had a lot of people that really enjoyed it, really liked it a lot, but then I also saw a lot of people that remarked that this smelled maybe a little bit too mature for them. And it definitely does come across as the most mature Aqua de Joe fragrance in the line. It comes across a little bit denser, maybe not quite as fresh as the other fragrances in the line, though it is still at the end of the day an Aqua de Joe fragrance, so it is more of a summertime scent, obviously. And even though this one maybe didn't take off quite as much as Prof Fumo or Profundo did in the fragrance community itself, it still has gotten a lot of love from people that love the Aqua de Joe line. And a lot of you were voting for it, saying that it's your favorite release of the year, and it makes it here in number five. Got to say, these first three fragrances lined up next to each other, their color schemes really work well together. Look at that, three summertime flankers starting off the list. Next up, we have Azaro's The Most Wanted Parfum, which did really well. A lot of people saying that they tried this one out, realized that they like it even more than the original The Most Wanted, and had to immediately scoop it up and that it became their favorite in the entire line. So we have three fresh summertime fragrances to start stuff off. And then we go straight into this one, fall, winter time, very sweet and compliment pulling. Now I have to agree with most of you guys that were leaving votes for this one, quite similar to the original The Most Wanted, but overall better. 
really, really good performance here. The bourbon vanilla in this smells fantastic with the incandescent woods giving you a little bit of a, a smokiness in there as well. The most wanted parfum, I would guess, is going to be in my top five a most favorite designer releases of this year, I'd say pretty comfortably unless something changes in a drastic manner. And for you guys, it was number four. Number three is one that I absolutely love, Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. So good to see that a lot of you didn't forget about this one since this came out toward the beginning of the year, I believe. Almost feels like it's not even a 2022 release. It feels like it's been that long, but I guess it really hasn't at all. And where the Most Wanted Parfum is not a drastic departure from the Most Wanted Eau de Parfum Intense, Gentlemen, Eau de Parfum, Reserve, Privé, quite a name, is not a drastic, drastic departure from the DNA that was set up specifically with Gentlemen Eau de Parfum. But with the addition of booziness in here, it really does help elevate the scent profile, the DNA, just a little bit further. So it's kind of seeing like how far they can stretch that DNA out with just making a few tweaks and changes. They've been doing that with this line for a minute now. Of course, that gentleman iris is front and center here. Smells as amazing as ever. And you also have a bit of chestnut in here as well. Really, really good fall and wintertime fragrance. Also one of my favorite releases of the year as well. So another one that I agree with you guys on. Now this one is a really big surprise for me. The one that came in at number two, because I didn't feel like as many of you guys out there probably had smelled this one or tried it, but it got a lot of love on that post. It's from Narciso Rodriguez and it is for him Blue Noir Parfum. So this is another iris forward fragrance. That means if you like scents like the Valentino Uomo line before it went Born in Roma style or the Dior Homme line before they got rid of the iris or the Gentleman line that we just spoke about, if you like fragrances of that ilk of that style, then this is something you should definitely check out. Got a bit of citrus in there off the top. It has woodiness as the fragrance dries down, tonka and a bit of suede leather as well, but all Always the iris is at the forefront of the scent. And especially as you move around, a little while ago, my friend Tommy from uh, Studio Sense, he stopped by and he had this fragrance on. And as soon as he came in the door, you could pick it up. That iris was right there. It smells really, really good in the air. Very attention grabbing. And of course, like pretty much any scent of that style where the iris comes across, uh, some people might say a little bit lipsticky or makeup-y, creamy, sweet, deep, rich. Those fragrances come across very classy as well. So really surprised, frankly, to see that in the top seven but in the top three is even more surprising, but I don't disagree with it. It's a really nice fragrance. I'm a sucker for Iris, so just surprising because I didn't think as many people would have smelled that as compared to say the Diorum Sport or Aqua de Jo or some of the other fragrances that didn't make the list. All right, we've made it to the number one, according to you guys. And it's not really a surprise, but then it kind of is a surprise at the same time. It's, it's a fragrance that just seems to get a lot of love and a lot of hate. And it's really interesting to see because I could also do a, a poll, a question. What do you think is the worst major new release of the year designer wise? And this one would probably come in the top three, if not number one. A lot of people would say, oh, I hate it. And yet here it is easily won as the most voted best new fragrance release of the year. Light Blue Italian Love from Dolce & Gabbana. In this fragrance, Italian Love actually got a decent amount of votes from you guys in a video where I asked you, what is your personal least favorite summertime fragrance that it seems like most people seem to love? This one got a whole lot of votes, a whole lot. And yet here it is, the best release of the year so far, according to you guys. I gotta say though, I love it. Italian Love is a really, really nice fragrance. The opening there smells great a more natural citrus once again. A little bit rindier, a little bit more tart than you're going to find in Terre d'Hermes Ogivre, but I actually like that. I really enjoy how it comes across with all these different facets of citrus instead of just saying, here's citrus, it's sweet, and that's it, it's just really sweet. Or here's citrus, and it's just really green and, and not much else. With Italian Love and also Light Blue Forever, the citrus is multi-layered, and I really dig that. Now, Light Blue Italian Love does have a, a pretty strong similarity to Light Blue Forever that came out last year. So if you wanted to ding it for anything, that's really what I personally would ding it for. Just not having quite as much originality because it plays so closely to last year's release. On the whole, though, I'm really happy with what they're doing with the Light Blue line. 
I think it's so much better what Italian love and forever put across than what they were doing before, like Italian zest. Between Italian zest and Italian love, give me the love. So there we go, guys. Your seven best designer releases at about the halfway point of the year. We'll see how this changes as new things come out as the year progresses on. We'll see if some of these get dethroned and knocked down the list, or if this is about as good as it's going to get this year. I would assume there's going to be some other big stuff that comes out, but we'll still have to wait and see. Thank you guys for sticking with me here. I know I sound probably nasally and, and weird. Stay safe out there, guys. Don't get the cold in the middle of summer like me. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.